Medical tourism has been with us for years. We may know someone who has had dental work or a cosmetic procedure done overseas. So in general terms, medical tourism is about um, a person or a group of people seeking healthcare benefit from accessing another healthcare system. The tradition there has been for people from, for example, third world countries to access first world healthcare. In recent years, we've seen the reverse of that to some extent. But recently, another type of medical tourism has emerged involving stem cell treatments for more serious medical conditions. Stem cell tourism is where patients go overseas for treatment. But what's happening domestically is that there are a growing number of operators who will offer you treatment here. Again, experimental, unproven, really unknown treatments. And that's of concern. So a lot of the information that we've put out about stem cell tourism is applicable to these providers in Australia. It's really important to do the research. There's no doubt that stem cells have revolutionised our um, abilities in biomedical science. What we're trying to do at the moment is to sort out what are the next steps, what are the realistic opportunities using stem cells beyond what we already have, and to separate that from areas whereby, at this point of time, it's exercise in futility. When it comes to stem cells, a lot of people have heard about them and they really, really see them as a, a way, as a, as a possible hope to treat them. What's really concerning is that there's a gap between what we're doing in the lab and for many conditions what we can deliver. And into this gap have stepped a lot of providers who are quite willing to treat people now without evidence. And that concerns me and my colleagues. So in our research project, we speak to a lot of people who've gone overseas and pursued stem cell treatments. And it's interesting that when they talk about risk, it's often risk, financial risk, doing your money. But the risk can be so much more. They could really be compromising the health that they do have. In many instances, what's being offered um, in a number of environments is an intervention which is neither a treatment nor does it have a realistic chance of providing benefit. For example, um, there have been instances of people going offshore to have, in inverted commas, stem cell extracts delivered to the buttocks. And that intervention cost those people $40,000. It's not a treatment, it's not even an experiment, it's an, inent it's an intervention couched in futility. Clinical trials are a way we learn in a controlled manner in medicine. Trials in Australia are free, but in the case of some overseas countries, there is a price tag attached. Risking treatments not based on evidence-based medicine can lead to adverse outcomes. So what we have done, and, and our colleagues from the International Society for Stem Cell Research and the Canadian Stem Cell Network, have been to put out patient handbooks which list more information about stem cells, but also questions that patients should ask of the provider if they're contemplating treatment. I think it's really important that you get that information, but then perhaps go back and talk to another doctor, a doctor who's not necessarily selling you something for a second opinion. A lot of these treatments are really just being marketed, that they're, they're selling hope. 